Hello, and welcome to this video about animation. Luxor is a simple wrapper for the Cairo graphics engine. It's written in Julia, which is an easy to use and powerful programming language. It's nice to have OmiRepl installed so that the syntax is colored as we type. Now we'll load Luxor. For our first movie, how about a simulation of the universe for the first few nanoseconds after the Big Bang? I'll define the width and height and give it a descriptive title. The default length is 250 frames. To draw each frame, we'll define a function. It'll take two arguments, a scene and a frame number. We'll draw a circle with the radius determined by the current frame number. To create the animation, the animate function needs the movie reference and one or more scenes. A scene determines which function draws the graphics and for which frames. We'll also ask for a GIF file to be made and we'll supply the path name. You'll need to have installed FFmpeg for this to work. Here's the result. Perhaps it needs some more dark matter. Let's try something slightly more complicated. Bouncing balls are probably the hello world of animation. So we'll make a simple animation of some bouncing balls. A new ball type can store some useful information, such as position and velocity. Physicists, please forgive me for using the point 2D type to store 2D vectors. We'll store the color as well. Creating 300 balls is a job for a comprehension. We'll assign random colors, positions, and velocities. There's more work for the frame generating function now. Loop through the balls, update the position of each one based on its velocity. Then we'll check the position to see if it's gone too far left or right. If it's too far, we'll reverse the velocity vector. We'll do the same for the vertical direction too. Finally, set the color and draw the ball. The animate function is as before. Just a single scene, a function called update. And we'll go for 1000 frames, overriding the default 250. It takes a little while to generate the frames and the animated GIF. Especially, on my slow computer while recording this video. I faded it out, it's not that interesting. To try and make it a bit more interesting, I thought about adding some simple collision checking.
Balls are as before. 500 is ambitious. A collision check function compares our candidate ball against all the others. Looking through them all, searching for any that aren't white and that overlap the candidate. If we find one, change our candidate to ghostly white and transfer its velocity to the victorious ball. The victor will change to red. The update function needs two changes. The collision check function is added. And the ghostly white balls are harvested that is removed from the population. In Julia, filters keep whatever matches the function. Again, the animate function is just a single scene, a function called update, and we'll go for 2000 frames. The animation is a bit more interesting. The predators turn red, and often get faster, as the green, blue, and purple balls get devoured and killed. I wonder if you could predict in advance how long the animation would have to be to record every death. To finish with, here's an idea to illustrate the use of multiple scenes. We'll add a title screen. The titles function shows the name of our pretentious art movie. Don't forget to restore the population again. And this time we provide two scenes to animate. The first runs the titles function for 60 frames. The second runs the update function for frames 61 and on.
Now the animation starts with a title card. The rest is as before, so we'll fade it out. Thank you for watching.